Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And Reed, it is really great talking today. I thought that Mass was so engaging, thought-provoking, and a lot of restraint on the f- all five of you, too. So thank you so much for making this film. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Now, Anne, what did you, did you read or watch anything to help you kind of get in the mind of what a mother must be going through in this situation? Well, I'm a mother. (laughs) And so uh, what is always the worry? Is he safe? Are they safe? She, he. Yeah. Um, Am I missing anything? Is this shift in behavior significant? So a mother can always go to the place of, oh God, keep them safe. However, the circumstances of Linda, um, God forbid. Uh, so again, that's our job, isn't it, for, as actors to mm-hmm. travel to that place. And I did read Sue Klebold's book, mm. Columbine, because I just needed a friend. <laughs> By that, I mean someone who who went through it, I yeah. mean, went through it, unlike me, who at the end of a day, I'm not carrying those consequences with me. So I stuck just with that and time alone and thoughts about my children and letting it all sink in and then trusting Linda to drop in and and (laughs) she did generous. Yeah, oh, incredible performance too, all four of you. Now Reed, do you see parents or these tragic events in a different light after making this type of movie in this specific story? Uh, I'm sure I do, I, I think that the circumstances that we portray in the movie are so inconceivable mm. to us mere mortals that uh, I am um, I'm sort of overwhelmed at the idea that there are people that have to deal with this, that have mm-hmm. to go through it. But I, uh, I can't imagine it is inconceivable to me. So right. um, having gotten the chance to portray somebody, I maybe have a slightly better picture of what what that is but um i am both uh full of awe and uh horrified right you know what i realized how judgmental i was about parenting Mm. just Mm. even on a playground uh this little sweet girl was talking to me we became friends she was precious and she said you know my dad's here and i'm thinking well why isn't he paying attention Mm. why is he allowing you to speak to this strange woman with a dog (laughs) <laughs> uh, and he could he would glance over and glance over, and I was thinking, goodness, paying attention. Well, the gentleman is blind and deaf, and I thought to myself, shame on you, yeah. making decisions mm-hmm. about his negligence. You don't know his story, dear. That's right. And right. so now I do take a step when I see something going on that I don't understand to say, that's correct, you don't understand. It's the Atticus Finch line, right? You don't know a man until you step in his shoes and walk around in him. And oh. uh, we had the we had the opportunity to have a little taste of it, and thankfully don't have to live with it. But um, it, yeah, we have a, we've had a glimpse of it. Yeah, I um, I don't know if this is. Am I taking you off your question? Oh my God, no. Like, I'm just loving the conversation. I love watching you two talk about this. Oh my God, please. I'm just a bystander. I'm just watching the two of you talk. No, no, it just reminded me, this isn't too much sharing. My oldest boy, beautiful boy, he's now a man of 29, uh, is on the autistic spectrum. And when Mm. he was a child in the playground, he could not play well with others, didn't know how. And I usually stayed close enough to listen. So if I had to, but for some reason, one day I was not close enough and I could see something had gone on, and I went over, and that the grandmother said, that is the cruelest child I have ever seen. Mm. She only meant verbally. He never would hit mm. anyone. And instead of saying, yeah, well, uh-huh, I just said, oh, let me, let me tell you. And I explained. She said, oh, God love that boy. Mm. She mm. immediately heard it and was the soul of kindness. Right. And I thought, lead there, not with defense. And she was so beautiful and she was so kind to my boy. Yeah. Once she knew and understood. Right. I got the wrap and I wish I could keep talking to both of you. This has been amazing. Uh, thank you, Paul. I'm, thank you're you. welcome. And I hope people take a lot of this movie and it really was a beautiful watch. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you're you. welcome. Thank Have you a great so day. Much. Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Jason, it is really great talking to you today. The four of you in this film were so phenomenal, and the story overall is so thought-provoking and engaging, and a lot of restraint, too, so I appreciate that, so thank you. Oh, I, I don't know if I should take uh, 
Thanks, Rory. We're all very, very lucky to be in something that's so uh, brilliant and powerful and, and has such a, an amazing effect on audiences that come along very rarely. I mean, I was, yeah, I was just going to ask him, like, material like this must be so rare. So when you get the script, it must be kind of a no-brainer to want to take on the story. Oh, yeah. I mean, not only is it, uh, as an actor, literally the kind of self-indulgent uh, <laughs> thing of going to some very extreme place emotionally uh, and it relying on the acting, but also has value. It's a story about how to get over division, how to get over blame and hatred. Uh, and it and it's gripping. I mean, I know it takes place on a small landscape, but it's it's maybe the biggest film I've ever been lucky enough to do emotionally. So, uh, wow. you know, in terms of the, the peaks and troughs of what the characters go through. So, uh, mm. yeah, it's a no brainer. What, what did you read or watch to really get into what parents in this situation must go through? Because you really have to have to be there to really understand what their thought process would have to be. Well, I hate to disagree with you, but uh, I think it's a film about uh, carrying hatred and the trenches we dig for ourselves that are so deep we can't see the world anymore. And uh, I think everybody knows that, certainly inside a marriage or, you know, work relationships or cross political divides, whether it's in England or Brexit and here it's to do with Republicans and Democrats or vaccines or whatever. You know, you, we uh, we live in a world of blame and, uh, you know, that that noise gets louder and louder and we live in this echo chamber of people reinforcing our views and we can get to a place where we've, we've paralyzed ourselves and these characters are paralyzed with with hatred and blame and, and they they can't move forward. They're in such pain. And uh, it's it's really very little to do with the actual incident that happened to these guys six years ago, or rather for those characters it is, but it's a very universal thing. Uh, what did I do? I tapped into those things I feel myself. I, I guess I, I wish I would have thought of that while watching it, but that makes complete sense. Like it's, there is this universal- The only reason problem. it would work for you as an audience, I've now seen it with an audience. I've seen it right. by myself, I've seen it with family members. I knew it was a very powerful experience emotionally, but I've forgotten what I remember, what I realized when I first read it, watching it with a big crowd of people, everybody engages uh, mm -hmm. and they find what's personal for them in it. You don't, you don't get an audience full of people weeping and gasping and then feeling the light come into their lives unless it touches some personal aspect of them. There's very few people, thank God, in the world who've experienced what the characters go through, but everybody has experienced resentment, denial, frustration, you know, uh, uh, a lack of connection. Now, dealing with this type of like heavy material, it must, you must need to have a lot of trust in, in an open space with your scene partners and with your director. Did the five of you do anything really specific to kind of get into that headspace or what was it was, did it just kind of come naturally? It's the material, you were dealing with something as as beautifully uh, created as this, that is as intense, it's what we do as actors, but you dream of a script that allows you to be this complex, this human, this recognizable. They mostly aren't, they're often two dimensional. You're trying to add a dimension to it, make it real, and your brain the whole time is going, why, no one would think this or something. Uh -huh. But uh, that didn't happen with this. I mean, what we did was realize that, you know, the bar is high. You read it and you go, I'm gonna have to be on my most honest game, mm -hmm. as it were. And so when we first met for a couple of days of notionally rehearsal, what it really was, was just peeling the layers away and instantly establishing an intimacy with each other, just sharing very vulnerable things about things that we hoped, feared, felt, hate, hated, wanted, um, with things that are going on in our lives now. Mm -hmm. And uh, and just, you know, you, there's no choice but to trust. It's like, you know, like you're climbing a, a mountain together, terrible analogy of just, <laughs> you're both on the end of the rope and you just, uh, we just had no choice but to go there, so we went there instantly. There's no, there was no slow burn allowed. Right, Jason, I got the wrap. This has been real a treat talking to you today. Thank you so much for the time, and thank you for making this movie and having those conversations that people will get out of watching this. It's so important right now. There's some catharsis and human connection that people get in this time of great division. Absolutely, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.